Hello everybody, today I'm going to explain and demonstrate what is an octave band. The word octave is derived from the Latin word meaning 8. In acoustics, the octave band represents a frequency band which spans one octave. Now let's get into musical terms. In music you have like 7 notes, A, B, C, D, E, F and G. Now the 8th note is sounds twice as high as the first note. So the 8th note is an octave of the first note and the eighth note's frequency is also twice uh, as of the first note. Now let's bring this analogy to an octave band. Consider an octave band. It'll have a lower frequency limit and the upper frequency limit. The upper frequency limit is twice uh, as that of the lower frequency limit and that length is called one octave. Now what are these octave bands and why they are useful? What is the reason for you know the development of octave bands? Now, uh, they're very useful in uh, problem solving, especially like determining frequency components. Now, let's consider a machine. A machine is making like some kind of abnormal uh, sound. So we intend to analyze what's wrong with that machine. So if you take a sound uh, level, level meter and try to capture the sound pressure level, all you have is one value, like an overall noise level, let's say 80 decibel. You can't really address what's wrong with the machine with just the sound pressure level. You need, you need the spectral content. That's where the frequency analysis comes into play. There are many frequency analysis. One of the analysis is the octave band, octave analysis. So this is how an octave band looks like. This is actually a one by one octave band. Now as you can see here, the octave band, the octave plot is a a plot of sound pressure level in decibel along the y-axis over the uh, frequency uh, frequency along the x-axis. Now, if you look at this uh, octave plot, you know it spans uh, a broad frequency range along the x-axis, and th this whole range has been you know subdivided into small chunks, and each chunks cover a particular frequency range. Now. So this is one good advantage uh, of this particular uh, band is like you can simply uh, you know pinpoint which band is popping up and directly point it to the particular frequency that's responsible. All right, now let's get into the math. So what you can observe here, the numbers 31.5623, they are the center frequencies, meaning the 31.5 hertz is a center frequency of this first band. Similarly, 500 hertz is a center frequency of this band. So how do you calculate that center frequency? Well, there is a mathematical relation for that. So this is how it looks. The center frequency or the next center frequency is 2 power 1 by n times previous center frequency. Now we know this is a 1 by 1 octave band, which means n equals 1. So plug that n equals 1 here, and you get center frequency next is twice center frequency previous. Isn't it true? You can uh, like check it here, like center frequency previous uh, is 250, consider this band. 250 times 2 is 500, that is the center frequency next. Alright, so this is center frequency. Now the next uh, uh, analysis is the uh, upper and lower uh, limits of a particular band. For example, let's say we have 125 uh, hertz as a center frequency. Now we need to know what is the upper and the lower limit. There is another relation for that. That looks something like this. So this is the lower limit, lower band limit, and this is the upper band limit. And again, n equals one because we are considering one by one octave band. You just plug in and you can you know, calculate and determine the upper and the lower limits. Well, I have calculated and it looks something like this. So these are the frequencies. I'm considering 16 to 16K, but you know, like you can also consider any other range you want. So uh, this is the center frequency and these are the upper and the lower frequencies. All right, now octave band is a constant percentage uh, band, meaning the, the band width is, a, you know, is proportional to the center frequency. So if the center frequency is really large, the band width is also large. Let's consider an example. Consider 250 hertz. 250 hertz is a small uh, center frequency, hence the band width or the difference between these two is also small, which is exactly 250. 
But if you go, you know, farther down the spectrum, consider 4000 hertz, the bandwidth increases. It's no longer 250. It's proportional to this center frequency. All right. And one disadvantage uh, regarding octave band is as you go to the higher frequencies, for example, this band, you don't get much accuracy. For example, this band is 4000 hertz long. So if there's a frequency component, you know, there's a, there's a problem with 6000 6, hertz or 5500, it may not get, you know, pinpointed. It's a uh, crude analysis. But the advantage is it consumes less space because there's less resolution. There are other types of octave bands like 1 12th, 1 6th, 1 3rd, 1 24. They're like little higher resolution. We'll discuss them in future videos. All right, now I'm going to demonstrate how the octave band even looks like, one, third, one, one octave band, using an app. Hello there. This is the uh, app that simulates the octave one by one band. You see, as I'm speaking, the levels are rising. And if you observe closely, there are these eight bands, whatever I showed, like, uh, you know, 31.5, 63, all the way up to 16K. So the SLM, what, sorry, the microphone here, what it does, the microphone of this device is it captures a sound and it, you know, plots each and every, uh, collects each and every frequency in the particular frequency band and it displays, you know, in real time. This is also sometimes called as a real time analyzer. You can also like, you know, select any frequency that you want and you can like actually get um, the dB level for that particular frequency. And this scale, the y-axis represents the dB level. Alright, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.